Welcome everyone to our Packers News live chat alongside Tom Silverstein. I am Olivia Reiner. The Packers wrapped up their final training pra camp practice yesterday right here at Lambeau Field. However, the competition is not necessarily done as the cut deadline looms on Saturday. We'll bring you the latest from everything going on with the Packers today. Before we begin get into that, I want to remind you as always, we want to hear from you. If you're over on the Facebook page, leave us a question, leave us a comment, and we will address some of those toward the end of our conversation today. The Packers had their last practice of training camp yesterday in what was the replacement for a lack of preseason games. However, most of the snaps went to the starting players. The Packers had about 100 plays yesterday, and half of those went to the starters. Tom, why was the emphasis yesterday on giving the starters some experience over some of the less experienced players? Well, I think there's two things. One, they felt like they needed to get their starters into some kind of a game-like situation just to, just to get them used to playing in the stadium, get them used to what the uh, environment's going to be like, and, and they need a little bit of preseason action too. But the other side of it is is I think they have their 53-man roster pretty well decided. I, I would bet that, you know, they, there's going to be a couple of questions like who who might get picked up if we cut them and who not. But if you think about it, most of their, all of their starting positions are pretty much locked. Their backup positions, a lot of them are locked except for, you know, maybe five spots at the bottom of the roster. So I don't know that they need a ton of more information. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, Tom, a lot of the starting roles on this Packers team were pretty much filled going into training camp. The only couple of positions I can think of really that had a little bit more competition than some of the other positions were, for example, at right tackle or base inside linebacker, that second inside linebacker position. Most of the competition, as you said, is for the bottom of the 53 and even the 16-man practice squad as well. Tom, what will general manager Brian Gutekinds be looking for in these last three days of practice leading up to the cut deadline? Well, I think some of it is going to be, uh, Matt LaFleur indicated that there were some injuries. And I, I think depth will be an, something that he's going to have to account for. So if there was a flurry of injuries at one position, then maybe he's got to take a look and see if one of his guys can help him right now instead of potentially being on the practice squad. I think that there will be a lot of that kind of stuff going on discussed after every day this week. Mm -hmm. While there may not be injuries at one particular position at the moment, there are some injuries throughout the roster. A number of players have been out missing substantial practice time including players like wide receiver Equinemia St. Brown, defensive lineman Montrevious Adams, inside linebacker Oren Burks, and safety Raven Green. The four of them did not participate in yesterday's final practice of training camp. Tom, what are the implications for players like these who missed a substantial period of time when general manager Brian Gutekinds is deciding who to cut, cut come Saturday? Yeah, I, it's... It it adds an element of unknown. Um, you know, I think Raven Green is on the roster no matter what. I don't think that's a question mark, unless his injury is an eight-week injury, but we haven't seen any sign that that's the case. Montrevious Adams is, a, you know, a bit of a question mark. He Did he show enough during the few days that they actually had him? Uh, do they just keep him based on potential, uh, which they've done the last three years? Maybe, probably. Uh, you know, and Equinemius St. Brown, I think he's the one who's hurting the most by not getting those those reps because they have to make a decision on how many receivers they're going to keep, who can help them right away, who they can get in through the uh, waivers and get onto the practice squad. So, you know, and Oren Burks, I, I would suspect, probably has a roster spot. Um, but... You know, everything's different. I mean, this is one of the most unusual um, camps just because of the whole COVID thing and how they're going to be thinking about that. In a typical training camp, a short-term injury wouldn't mean a whole lot. However, in an abbreviated training camp, 
a short-term injury becomes a long-term injury and any mispractice time can be a hindrance to a player. We'll see how general manager Brian Gutekunst decides to handle some of his injured players as we approach Saturday. All right, let's move on to some of your very wonderful questions over on facebook.com. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We appreciate it. Let's start with Timmy. Timmy asks, how about the defensive line? That was the Packers' weakness last season. Um, Timmy wants to know a little bit more about how the Packers plan on stopping the run heading into 2020. The run game, Tom, is a difficult thing to evaluate in training camp. There is no live tackling, so it can be easy for a running back to find a hole in the defensive line, and it doesn't appear to someone like you or me that that running back is ever tagged up or tackled in mm -hmm. any capacity. However, defensive lineman Tyler Lancaster spoke to the media yesterday, and he even said it himself. Going back and looking at the film, he's able to see, okay, that run didn't look as big as, as it did on film as it did in real time. That being said, Tom, what have we gleaned from this Packers run defense in training camp? Uh, it's, a, it's funny you ask that because Jim and I talked about that a little bit on the podcast, and I basically said nothing because <laughs> we just can't tell how it's the hardest thing to judge. Now, you know, we have seen some big holes Aaron Jones has run some, through some giant holes. But as you know, they pointed out, sometimes it's not the defense that they would be playing against that particular offense. So it's really, we won't know. We won't know going into the season what it's going to be like. I mean, we know from a talent standpoint, I think the addition of, um, I think uh, uh, Kingsley Kiki is going to add a lot to their but I don't know if it'll be in the run game. It might be more in the pass rush. Um, Rashawn Gary's probably going to play some more. You know, will that help them some? He's, he's really strong. Um, boy, and, and if Kamal Martin starts, what does he add? So there's a lot of question marks, and I know everyone wants that answer, but believe me, I do too. I don't know. Timmy is not the only one that will have that question going forward. I am sure we will continue to discuss the Packers run defense as we get closer and closer to that game week one against the Minnesota Vikings when that run defense is going to be either exposed for good or for bad reasons. Yeah, and I expect the Vikings to attack them. I mean, I, I think they will run it. I think they'll attack Christian Kirksey as a, a, you know, a smaller linebacker and if Kamal Martin starts as a rookie, I, I would fully expect them to, to try to test that. All of your run defense related questions should be answered, possibly not by week one, but as we get rolling into the regular season. So Timmy, thank you so much for your question. Let's move on to Pete. Pete asks another fantastic question that we will continue to discuss throughout the rest of, I suppose, the preseason now before week one, and perhaps going into week one as well, who is the starter? at right tackle. Head coach Matt LaFleur is not showing his cards. He repeatedly says that he, they are looking for every combination of five players along the offensive line. Regardless of who it is, they just want whoever the best person is. That being said, we can also use our own eyeballs and judge ourselves as well. Um, right tackle Rick Wagner missed a big chunk of camp. He just recently started getting acclimated and getting involved back in team periods. He missed a few practices with a left elbow injury. How much did that injury set him back in his competition for the right tackle position? Maybe a little bit, uh, but you know, they know what Rick Wagner can do. I don't think they have any concerns about him fitting in or not knowing the offense. I mean, getting to know the guy next to you, that's, that's part of playing the offensive line, but they could throw a game plan at Rick Wagner that he could learn in a day. That's just how experienced he is. I think the big question is what happened to Billy Turner during the scrimmage? Is his ankle or foot or whatever it was one of those injuries that LaFleur made reference to today that could be a problem? You know, then they've got two injured right tackles, you know, guys who aren't at 100%, and then what do they do? So. Uh, that does add a little bit of a wrinkle to it all. 
that'll be certainly something to keep an eye on going forward. Luckily, Tom, you will be present at all of the remaining Packers practices. Both Tom and Jim will be inside of the Hudson Center or wherever the Packers are practicing. As they get into regular season protocols, you will be our eyes and ears on the ground. Yeah, we'll be practice. able to see who's there, you know, and do an attendance um, chart, but they're not going to let us watch very much. I just know it. No, no, no. They'll be kicking you out shortly after stretch. However, attendance alone is certainly an important Something. aspect of, yeah. of the job. Let's move on to a question. I has had some people asking about Jordan Love. Josh wants to know, how has Jordan Love looked through camp? Love, as all of the rookies, you know, have been in the same boat for this training camp. They did not have a rookie camp. They do not have preseason games. And they only really had about 12 training camp practices to get up to speed in the offense and in the defense. For Love in particular, given the circumstances, how has he looked in his first training camp? Lost, just like every rookie I've ever seen come into. You know, there's been like two or three guys who've come in who knew the game and weren't lost, you know? They were just guys who were exceptional football people. And uh, it's it's not surprising and it's not a concern. I mean, he's coming from a spread offense in college. He only played three years. He had no off season uh, to, to work on footwork and all the other things. I, this season is a wash for him. It's all a learning experience and you know, I, I don't know if people were thinking that he might compete or, or whatever, but once there was no off season, that wasn't gonna happen. And so everything's a learning experience from, he's got talent, you could see it, you could see it in the scrimmage. He, he hit a couple of passes that were beautiful. And then he sails one over, he throws one to where there's nobody. That's just part of being a rookie. Let, I, I don't think we can make any judgment on him till next summer. Tom, you spoke a little bit about Love's development on the Green 19 podcast over on JS Online, Packers News. If you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend listening to what Tom and Jim have had to say about this training camp as a whole. However, when it comes to Love, how does his camp compare to way back when Aaron Rodgers was a rookie? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I, I had to think hard about that. Um, Aaron Rodgers, you know, so Brett Favre was the quarterback, extremely veteran. Um, I think Doug Peterson might have been the backup at the time. Maybe Craig Null, I, I can't remember. But Rodgers struggled. And I remember, I've said this in the podcast, I remember Bob McGinn and I being on the sidelines. And, you know, we're used to seeing Favre, his excellence and his arm strength. And, and we're like, you know, Rodgers really doesn't have that strong of an arm. You know, he... I don't know, you know, I don't know if this guy's gonna make it, you know, so there you go. I mean, uh, we're supposed to be two of the veteran minds and we both were like, didn't see it. And I remember Mike McCarthy saying, you'll see it, you'll see it. And he was right. Well, hopefully no uh, GM or scout or anyone from any other team was using your it was knowledge listening as, to me, exactly. as insight. If, if you're watching this and you're a scout, Go to another channel. <laughs> Don't listen to us. Uh, but yeah, it's yes. Love, patience is always the word, I think, when it comes to some of these draft picks. It applied to Rashawn Gary last year. Granted, right. we've seen improvement and development in Rashawn Gary this training camp. However, we will see if that translates to an actual game. That being said, patience, always he, patience. He's one of the guys I really want to see. I'm really eager to see because I've seen some things from him in camp that have made me go, wow, is he strong? I mean, he's like throwing people around. But is that going to translate when you get into a regular season game and there's an offensive lineman who's not a second stringer and he knows how to keep his feet and his balance? So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing that. Once the they opener. start going up, up against quality opponents, beginning with week one, we will have a lot more information about where these players have gone since 2019. Let's move on to Dan. Dan asks another. These are really good questions today, everybody. Dan asks, who's the starting tight end on this Ooh, team? That is a good question. It's a great question because I think going into training camp, there was a, 
a notion possibly that second year tight end Jay Sternberger would be taking the reins of starting tight end away from now departed Jimmy Graham, who is down with the Chicago Bears. However, Jay Sternberger early went on COVID reserve. He missed all of the acclimation period and the beginning of training camp. Now he has had a pretty quiet training camp and it looks like Robert Tanyan, Mercedes Lewis, and even Josiah DeGuara have all gotten more reps and a little bit more experience in camp than him. Where does Sternberger and all the tight ends fit in on the step chart? Yeah, so just regarding Sternberger, I, I'd be interested to know what they're saying in the personnel room because I think, in my opinion, that time off for the COVID really hurt him. And not just because he wasn't there. I mean, he was going through the meetings, but I think physically it had to have affected him. He couldn't leave the apartment. You know, where is he working out? I don't know. It's just not the same. All the other guys are, are full bore into conditioning and strength work, and, and he's at home. So I think that affected him, uh, and, and maybe mentally too. Uh, when they st- the way I figure it is if they're going to run the ball on the very first play of the game, then Mercedes Lewis is the tight end. If they're going to throw it, then maybe Robert Tanyan or, or Josiah Degara is. I, I really don't know. I don't think there's a starting tight end. I think it's all going to be situational. You it's know, a, who, fits, yeah. who fits the play call, who fits the matchup, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's tough because – Head coach Matt LaFleur has said that they want their tight ends to be able to do everything and they don't want them to be able to show a defense exactly what the play is going to be because of the personnel on the field. We'll see exactly how they go about handling that as we get closer to the start of the season. Let's go to another one of these questions that I've already lost. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, The question, here we go, is from Nolan. Nolan asks, which player is the next priority to re-sign? The Packers have a number of 2021 free agents. One of them is already under contract. That would be Kenny Clark. He has been extended already. You can go read on PackersNews.com all of the details about his extension that our lovely Tom Silverstein was able to acquire for us. Some good nuggets in that story. Tom, who is next to be signed by the Packers? Uh, Bakhtiari is number one on the priority list, has been since the Kenny Clark signing. I um, I was really skeptical about them re-signing Aaron Jones, but from what I've seen in training camp, now I'm starting to think that this is the guy who the offense is going to run through, more so than even Rodgers, that there's so much more he can do in the pass game that uh, they, they may end up having to sign him and uh, keep from letting him get to free agency. Just might be that he is good enough to do that. Um, you know, these days, running backs tend to be, worth, you know, last three years, four years, and you don't spend a ton of them when they hit their contract, only a few. He might wind up being that guy, and then that's going to really affect their their cap because that's an expense I don't know if they have on the books. If the Packers make Bakhtiari and Jones a priority before they hit the market, that might mean bad news for players like cornerback Kevin King, right. center Corey Lindsley, yes. who are also 2021 Absolutely. free agents. So Absolutely. It's not going to be an easy job up there in the Packers front office to make it work with the Packers cap in 2021. Mm -hmm. That's not our job, but we will keep you in the loop with everything. I just second guess it all. Yes, exactly. It's easy to criticize. Let's take Jordan's question here. Jordan asks, does safety Raven Green and inside linebacker Kamal Martin make it easy to part ways with inside linebacker Oren Burks? Um, Jordan says that outside of pass coverage, he is a liability. There are still so many questions surrounding Oren Burks because we haven't been able to see him in a totally healthy capacity at the inside linebacker position over the past two seasons. The past two preseasons, he has sustained injuries that have lingered into the regular season. How does the current depth chart and some of the other players that either play at that second inside linebacker role in base defense 
or as sort of a dime linebacker. How do those players impact Oren Burke's future on this team? It, it does. Normally, I would say that you're right, that Raven Green, Will Redman, those guys are going to play in that nickel spot uh, quite a bit in that second inside linebacker position, and that Oren Burks could be in trouble. And he may be in trouble, but I keep coming back to when they threw him on special teams last year, he was really good. He uh, wound up tying for the lead in special teams tackles. And I don't know, maybe that's going to be uh, what tips the scale in his favor, that they give him a chance. I, I have almost given up on him as an inside linebacker. I just don't see it. Uh, Martin's been better. Ty Summers, you know, at least is good. Uh, he, Summers and Burks on special teams are really critical. So I don't know, maybe that special teams thing weighs in favor of Burks. There are players who are biting at his ankles as we speak when it comes to that second inside linebacker position. We'll see exactly how general manager views the depth chart. General manager Brian Gutekunst views the depth chart as we get closer to Saturday's. And, and don't forget, bottom. we will find someone, I guarantee you, who we thought, oh, that guy didn't wasn't supposed to make the roster you know they see things that we don't you know they see what a Chandon Sullivan could do or a Will Redman or you know uh, someone that you just didn't expect to make it um, and so I think there will be a player like that maybe two there's always a surprise yeah and that's what makes them surprises is that we don't usually expect it Let's move over to Todd. Todd asks, how many tight ends do you think the Packers will keep on their initial 53-man roster? When I met with Ryan Wood and we did our way too early initial 53 projections before the start of training camp, we both had four tight ends. We had uh, Josiah DeGuara, Mercedes Lewis, Robert Tanyan, and Jay Sternberger. Now that camp has passed and we've seen all the tight ends in action, how likely is it that four tight ends make this initial roster? Yeah, I think four is, four is good. Uh, I, I, I even wonder about Evan Bayless. He, he's not had a bad camp. He's been an interesting guy to watch. But, yeah, it's got to be four. Uh, it also depends. So what if they decide that DeGora can fill as a fullback and they don't want, you know, and they don't keep love it? Then maybe they keep even Bayless, you know. Then they have five tight ends and count DeGura as a, as a fullback. I don't know. Uh, it, it also depends if there's someone that out there that they want to pick up, but I would say four at a minimum. Yeah, it's a good question, but that's exactly what it, it kind of feels like. It's funny, Todd actually, his follow-up was any chance that DeGuara mo moves to fullback. It's he certainly... won't be a fullback, but he can play it. He can go in there and, and do it. The word of the century with him has been versatility. Head coach Matt LaFleur yeah. has used that many times to describe him, and we've seen that play out in training camp. He's lining up all over the formation, and he's not only being used as a blocker, he's also getting some opportunity as a receiver as well. Yeah, and don't forget, tight, tight ends as rookies, it's really hard to make a big impact. It's, it's almost like wide receiver. There's just so many defenses you see, and as a wide receiver, it's really difficult. So, you know, they probably want him working on his blocking mostly anyways because Tanya and Sternberger and Mercedes Lewis are going to get the bulk of the work in the oh, passing game. Certainly. However he can contribute, he will find opportunity in this Packers offense. Head coach Matt LaFleur has not shied away from using him so far this training camp. We'll see exactly how that translates to the regular season when we get there. That is going to do it for us today, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. The Packers are off tomorrow, so will we, and then we'll come back to you on Wednesday for another live stream. We'll take all of your questions then, so if you did not get your question in today, don't worry. Come back Wednesday, and we will be here for you once again. In the meantime, make sure you're checking out PackersNews.com for all of your Packers updates. Also, follow us on social media, especially if there's any breaking news around the corner. Players might get cut prior to that Saturday deadline, so make sure you've got all of your notifications turned on as 